Good morning. This is Dr. Bill Williams on the Influencers Podcast. We're here today, another star-studded day with a great round of uh, interviewees. So today we want to start with Chris Clues, who is the creator of Life Lessons from the 1980s. And I want to bring Chris right on. Welcome to the Influencers Podcast, Chris. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bill. I appreciate you having me. It's, uh, it's, I really, really appreciate the megaphone. Uh, it's, it's, you know, independent, it's podcasters like you that give people like me an opportunity to get our words and our voice and content out to the world. And I truly appreciate it. Well, absolutely. We want to know all about you, what you're doing, what makes you tick. So tell us what happened, who you were surrounded by and and what inspired you to do what you're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I appreciate it. I, I actually would just mention that it's, uh, it's work in life lessons from eighties pop culture. And, uh, there's three books in my series. Uh, the first two books focus more on the workplace lessons that we can learn from 80s pop culture, mainly the movies. And then the last, the most recent one that launched in September is really focused more on life lessons that we can learn from, from 80s pop culture. And so I got started, I was uh, 20 plus years in, uh, in marketing in the corporate world. And although I really enjoyed marketing, uh, I felt like there was something else out there for me. I just didn't know what it was. And so I think like a lot of people, I was at home. Uh, kind of having a self-pity party of one, I suppose, uh, about my career direction and where I was going. And The Breakfast Club came on. Uh, I'd seen that movie. Of course, it's on my shirt here. I'd seen that movie, The Breakfast Club, a hundred times or so. And I'd never, I'd, I'd heard this line, but I'd never really listened to it. And it's when John Bender, the criminal says, screws fall out all the time. And the world's an imperfect place. And I sat up and I said, my world's in an imperfect place. My screws have fallen out. What am I going to do to put those screws back in? Am I going to put the same screws in and go down that same proverbial journey? Uh, And just, you know, as Henry David Thoreau said, lead that life of quiet desperation that I was leading. Uh, Was I going to look for a whole new set of screws and a whole new door and walk out to a brand new journey? And that's what I decided to do. Uh, Johnny Cade from The Outsiders also influenced me. He said, you still have a lot of time to make yourself be what you want. And I was 46 years old. I wasn't a young entrepreneur. I'm not an old entrepreneur, but not a young one. And uh, I thought, yeah, I do still have a lot of time to make myself be what I want. And so I sit in front of you today, five years later, with uh, three books and a keynote speaking career on the topic. That sounds like a story that mirrors mine. I started over at age 48 myself and had a, a much finer finish than I had a start. So I can relate. Tell us how you got to this point, this great failure story. And what did you learn from it? How did you recover? Yeah, I think looking back, you know, I I talk about again, going back to the screws falling out uh, um, analogy or using that quote from from the Breakfast Club. And, you know, I think my I would say that my greatest failure was uh, not recognizing that I was only doing what I liked and not necessarily what I loved. And I think that when we talk about personal relationships, how many people in our life have we dated or gone out with that maybe we liked? But then that that leap to love is such a huge leap that we talk about in our personal relationships. And I don't think we talk about that enough in our work, uh, in our career, in our, in our career life, in our work life, in that difference between like and love. And that chasm is huge. And I'm now at a point where I'm doing what I love. And and on the one hand, it's my biggest failure that it took me so long to realize that. On, on the other hand, it's my biggest success uh, because I wasn't ready for it 10 or 20 years ago. And I was ready for it at the moment that that it, it came to me. So I would say it was both my biggest success and my biggest failure. Well, that's identifiable. Um, what I would wonder is with your life experience and your late arrival at this career choice, what causes other people to delay that situation where they feel successful? What caused them to fail early in life? I, you know, I can, it's hard to, to answer that question for other people. I can speak for me, but I would say that I think one of them is that you have to recognize that there are no guarantees. And so even if you put the best product, the best content, the best service out there, there's no guarantee that people are actually going to care about what you're putting out there. And that means you're just going to have to work just as you know, harder and harder to try to make that. And I don't mean working hard doesn't mean, you know, 16 hours, 18 hours a day. It could, I suppose. But what it really means is, you know, working harder and working smarter, but understanding there's never a guarantee 
that people are going to uh, embrace what you're creating, even if it's something great. You may be ahead of the curve. You may be behind the curve. Um, but I think that that's one of the reasons that that sometimes people fail is they say, I'm going to do this. And they wake up the next day and say, OK, everybody, here I am. Here's my my great thing. You should buy it. You should like it. You should love it. And that's just not the reality. Even if you look at some of the great entrepreneurs, you'll see how many times they failed before they succeeded. And I think giving up after that first failure is probably the biggest reason people fail. Um, your best idea may not be your first one. Your best idea may be your fifth or sixth one, but don't give up right away. Totally believe that. Your best idea is certainly not always your first one. <laughs> Tell me, we're going to do a lightning round now where you get to just throw off the top of your head the answers to these uh, very uh, esoteric questions. They may not seem connected, but in the end, they will they'll totally connect things together. What motivates you, Chris, internally? Uh I think that for me, what motivates me internally is the drive to um, have a legacy, um, somebody that's never had kids, uh, never been married. And so, you know, there's a legacy out there for me. And I think this, th what I'm creating right now, I would really love. It's great to think that you have these books out there that a hundred years from now, somebody might buy and that's your legacy. It's pretty cool. Excellent. What are the three success secrets that you can have others model from? Uh, one, wake up every day, excited to face the day, understanding that you are absolutely doing what you love. So be excited to face the day. Two is, we just mentioned it. Don't give up. You know, your first idea may not be your best idea. If you're in the entrepreneurial world, uh, don't give up. And third is, you know, just laugh, try to laugh every day. I think Jim Belvano said it best when he said, you know, he had his great speech at the ESPYs. And one of the things he said is laugh every day. If you laugh every day, that's a good day. So uh, what's your company's motto? Wow. Uh, you know, that's, you're putting me on the spot here. I, I hadn't really thought about the, uh, my company's motto. I'd say my company's motto is probably that 80s pop culture is the greatest pop culture. <laughs> I think that's probably my company's motto. I'm not really sure. I, I think it's, uh, you know, I have a very unique, um, different type of content. Let's go back to the future and find out. That's right. Let's go back to the future and find out. Should you um, have somebody want to buy something from you? What would be the big why? Yeah. So my content is unique. It's different and it's fun. And you will not find anything else out there like it. That I can guarantee you. Uh, this idea of life and work lessons from movies like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Coming to America and Back to the Future, which you mentioned, The Breakfast Club. Um, there's nothing else out there like it. So that's why you should buy the, the books. Whole different when level I, on why you should buy me for a keynote speaker, but we'll talk about that. When I saw your LinkedIn profile, I go, I've never seen anything like this. So I totally believe you on that one. Well, thanks. <laughs> Tell us who your ideal client is. Uh, ideal client for the books is really anybody who loves pop culture and, and really loves the 80s. And then also people who are looking for a unique spin on life and work lessons. You know, how can I be better as a, as a human being and, and, and how can I do better in my career? Uh, as a keynote speaker, my ideal client is any organization or association out there that wants a fun, unique, interactive speaker that's going to leave people with things that they're going to retain and then use uh, when the situations present themselves. I can imagine it being a lot of fun. So how do you find this ideal client? What's your method? Yeah, so a couple of different channels. I have a business manager, uh, speaking agent. Um, she's fantastic. And so she's one way to do it. The other way I do it is through social media. Uh, you know, they say nothing's free. And of course, you're the product if something's free. And that's OK. I'm OK being the product on social media uh, because it does actually allow me to access a lot of people that they wouldn't know that I exist. And then, of course, through podcasts like yours. Do you have, uh, again, mentioned the well-defined products, your books and your speaking? What else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the three books that I have um, and my my keynote speaking as well, the content and the presentations with my my keynote speaking are my main services. I do some marketing consulting on the side, but less and less of that as this has grown. Do you have competition in this field? I don't believe that I do. Uh, I mean, obviously I do when it comes to, you know, books and speaking, of course, keynote speakers. Uh, but with my unique content, I've kind of I've run up that mountain, that 80s pop culture, life and work lessons mountain, and I've planted my flag. How do you handle rejections? Just keep going. 
Just bypass them, right? Just don't even just stop. Keep going, yeah. How do you handle an angry client? Uh, thankfully, I haven't had one. Uh, I could speak to that if I was still in the corporate world, I'm sure. But at least in this new environment that I'm in, I haven't had an angry client. So uh, that's, that's awesome. That's probably the best reason involved to enjoy your day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. How do you deliver a five-star client experience from the stage? Yeah, I think my, my number one priority is to make everyone involved in hiring me look good. That's my number one priority. So you know, I worked in corporate marketing for a long time. I know how difficult event planning and meeting planning is. I have an utmost respect for people who do it. So my ultimate goal is to make everybody who is involved in bringing me to the stage look good to their manager, to their supervisors, to the leadership team, to the audience, the attendees, the sponsors, and everyone else involved. Wow, that's creative. And it leads us into the next question perfectly. How do you create your brand ambassadors? You just do the extra. I think particularly for me as be, being a keynote speaker, I'll give you one quick example. Uh, I was speaking at a pretty big conference and afterwards there were a couple of people who had hired me that were packing up some of the things upstairs and I helped them pack up the boxes, help them bring them out to their cars uh, so they could transport them wherever they were going. And, you know, that was something they said to me, they've never had a speaker do that before. So it's just, it's little things like that. It doesn't take a lot of your time to do things like that at all. Perfect. Uh, tell us what you're gr grateful for today, Chris. Life. <laughs> I, uh, I've had, you know, I had some loss early on in my life, um, some significant loss early on in my life. So I'm grateful for life. How do you start every day? Slowly. <laughs> I'm not a morning person, so it's slowly. Uh, I start every day walking my dog, Bodie. Uh, that's really how I get my day started. How are you going to plan for the big success, your goal? Uh, keep plugging away. Uh, ultimately I want to be able to say that, you know, I'm one of the most, one of the premier keynote speakers in the country and that, uh, ultimately, you know, I am so busy that, uh, the inside of a plane is more familiar to me than my home. Although I would miss my dog quite a bit. <laughs> I understand. Travel can have its downfall taking yes, your can. pets with you. What about, um, Failure. If you couldn't achieve your goal, how would you feel? Uh, disappointed. I'd feel disappointed. Uh, I think because I, it took me so long to recognize what it was that I wanted to do. And so, you know, I'm all in here. Um, there's, there's no plan B. How do you overcome a challenge when life throws one at you? Uh, I would say lots of ways uh, to solve challenges, but I think uh, ultimately I would say that, um, I've learned to take a step back, uh, not rush in so quickly and take a step back and say, okay, you know, what is the context of this challenge? And then that helps me, you know, come up with a solution. And you're not always going to, you're not going to solve every challenge. I think that's the most important thing to know. Looking back in your life, if you talk to your 20 year old self, knowing what you know now, what would you advise that 20 year old boy to do? Keep playing baseball. <laughs> would have been a much easier path. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Who's your living mentor and their impact? Whew. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I am really, I, I haven't um, given this a whole lot of thought. The living mentor. Wow. Uh, can we come back to this one in the lightning round? <laughs> like the uh, $10,000. Hey, let's $10, change the movie? question. Of all the yeah. 80s movies characters, which yeah. one would you like to be the most? Wow, that's a great question. And I've never been asked that. I would have to say, uh, I'd like to be a combination of a few. So a combination of Lloyd Dobler from uh, Say Anything, John Cusack's classic character, uh, along with uh, Jeff Spicoli, just because he was so much fun and didn't have a care in the world. And then throw in a little Maverick from Top Gun. I think that would be a pretty good mix. I feel the need for speed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, uh, tell yeah. us why is being important. I'm sorry. Why is being impactful important to you? Uh, I think you know if you can, if one person can walk away from your content, if, for in particular, specifically for me, walk away from my content and my presentation and say I learned something today that I hadn't thought about, or I learned a way, as you mentioned earlier, to face a challenge or a problem in my life. We're all going to have them. Uh, I think that's why it's important being impactful. You don't know sometimes who you've influenced, and that's pretty cool. So what do you want to be remembered for? 
Uh, being a good human being, I think ultimately at the end of the day, we'll talk about that at the end of this uh, end of the episode here. How can we support you? We want to let our audience know where they can get your books, uh, reach you for engagements, public speaking, whatnot. Yeah, chrisclues.com, C-H-R-I-S-C-L-E-W-S.com is my website. And then I'm on the socials, uh, Instagram, at chrisclues80s, Twitter, at 80s Pop Culture, which I can't believe was available. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn at Chris Clues. Uh, haven't gone over to TikTok yet. Not sure if I will. So those are the four that I'm mainly on. And then my books are on Amazon. They're in Barnes & Noble, uh, Barnes & Noble Digital, uh, Amazon, and most digital retailers and some, some uh, brick and mortar retailers as well. Yeah, I think everybody should put the book list into their computer, check it out, buy some books. It sounds like a lot of fun and education too, not just fun. Yeah, I appreciate that. And by the way, if I could just go back to the living mentor, it would probably be Richard Branson um, only because we talked about failure and success and how many times he failed and continued, failed and continued until he was successful. And um, he's got a pretty awesome origin story, as you and I have mentioned before, or the word origin. Yeah, Richard Branson, uh, Necker Island fame and other things. We we sailed by his uh, place just last couple of weeks ago, and uh, he was having a big party on the island. Some birthdays were happening that particular week of some people I know. So, you know, Richard Branson's quite a guy to have as a mentor. So, excellent. Yeah, yeah. lots of failures before success. So tell me, what do you... Uh, want to say about your experience on our show today i loved it i like the lightning round it's awesome i think it's great it's you know keeps you on your toes and uh and i really enjoyed it and again cannot tell you how much i appreciate the opportunity and the megaphone that you're providing to people like me thank you chris you're welcome and i'm gonna give you the final word and let you talk to our audience about anything you'd like it's a pleasure having you on the show and i'll i'll sign off to the show after you are done. Okay, awesome. I appreciate it. So yeah, what I just want to say is, you know, I think that in life and in work, some of the best lessons for life and work come from the most unexpected of places. And for me, again, that's 80s pop culture. Uh, when you read my books, when you see my keynotes and hopefully hire me to be a keynote speaker with your organization or association, you'll find that there are these incredible lessons when we don't expect them. You know, when we walk into a classroom, we're kind of wired to learn we're ready to learn. I think when we learn something from somebody or someplace unexpected, that's when we actually retain it. And then we take it back with us and the situation presents itself. And we're like, oh yeah, Prince Akeem from Coming to America, Jess Bacoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High, or the kids from the Breakfast Club. I remember that they taught me that lesson about teamwork or inclusion or workplace culture. So uh, I do believe strongly in that. And one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, is that you know, I talked about legacy and there's a great movie, Dead Poet Society, uh, Robin Williams, who left us way too soon, played John Keating, this, this teacher at an elite boarding school. And one of the things he says to the kids is no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. And they can. And in the palm of our hand, we have the way we have a way to get our words and ideas out to the world. It's the great equalizer today, unlike, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, but that's talking the talk. You got to walk the walk as well. And for me, that's animal rescue. I mentioned my dog earlier. His name is Bodie. Yes, he's named after Patrick Swayze's character from the movie Point Break. And uh, Bodie, uh, you know, was found on the street, basically dead, paralyzed, couldn't go to the bathroom, bugs all over him, uh, found by a few cops who took him to a rescue that I follow. And ultimately, I ended up um, with Bodie in my life in August of 2020. And he carried me through a very rough patch, uh, March of 2021. The person, I, the, the, the girl that I was dating, she bought an RV. I knew she was had a life journey. She needed to continue. I didn't want to get in the way. She uh, took an RV, went out to Oregon, lives out there now. Very happy. I'm happy for her. But a month later, my stepmom died suddenly of pancreatic cancer. And then three months later, my mom died of Alzheimer's. It was a really rough patch. But through it all, I had Bodie Boy next to me. Always made me laugh. Always made me smile. Uh, rescued is the best breed. I would just encourage everybody. There's so many dogs that need homes out there. There's so many. The shelters are overflowing. Um, please, if you're considering a dog or, or a cat for that matter, uh, please go to your local rescue, your local shelter and get them there. Rescued is the best breed. Trust me when I tell you they will save you as much as you save them. Well, there you have it. A heartfelt message from our friend Chris Clues, the uh, voice from the 80s coming back 
to either bless us or haunt us, depending on your point of view, right? Thank you, Chris, for being here. And stay tuned for more broadcast on the Influencers podcast today.